Okay, we're really, really late. We got to start the show. We, uh, I, I want to get right into it, but I really want to tell you something about myself that not a lot of people know. But I know you're waiting. I know you're waiting. We got. We should probably get to the show. It's like it's gonna start in like any second now, and I can't wait to see who the guest is. I don't know if it's mine or theirs. I don't know because I'm shooting. It. I'm looking in the mirror right now, you guys, and I look amazing. I look incredible. I'm wearing a baseball hat. I'm wearing glass. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay, we'll get right to it. Get right to it, get right to it, get right to it, get right to it. Welcome to Smartless. Smart. Will mentioned that he was going to try a couple of new characters today. Oh, yeah, he is, did. Uh, Just did, he, nice. did he talk about some new characters? Is that what he was saying? Make sure they aren't <laughs> offensive um, uh, oh, okay. accents, please. Okay. okay. Oh, this, oh, this guy's offending you. Oh, yeah. That's sort of stereotypical uh, what? You don't know anything about that guy's story. You don't know anything about that guy's Tell story. Tell us about him. Tell us about him. Uh, I, sorry, he... <laughs> I'm so in. I love talking about my work as an actor and how I got there. And, uh, <laughs> well, this is I a think... great segue because let me tell you. Let me tell you what I want to yeah, talk about. Yeah, I agree. This it is what I yeah. want to talk about too. I know Listener, what you're get uh, to. Will and I are fresh off the boat from uh, New York. And uh, yes, we we uh, do no, 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 travel no, no, by water. To. We don't like to fly. No, Sean, you'll be quiet. Sean, you will be quiet. You'll be I'm quiet. Corner. And um, very nice we're back nice from New York, and we uh, we went and saw Sean's play. We had the, the pleasure. Tabasco. We the had Belasco, the, uh, sorry, the Belasco. We had the honor of seeing Sean uh, in Good Night Oscar at the Belasco. And let me tell yeah. you about garbage. Um, <laughs> you can smell it from a mile away, but That's when you actually garbage, yeah. see it. Yeah, trash. When you look at trash. Uh, it'll yeah. pile up. Yeah, it does. And it, used, used, the flies give it away. Yeah, the flies. Are I used like, to oh, date yeah. that all the time. Sean, guys, Sean, Sean is such a mega if you're talent. Anywhere near, <sighs> if you're anywhere near New York City, listener, yep. do your eyes and ears a favor and your heart, quite frankly, mm -hmm. and your tear ducts mm -hmm. and your laugh uh, uh, machine and go see Goodnight Oscar. Sean, I, Will and I said it immediately after the standing ovation. No, no, Sean uh, turned around. Sean, Jason was sitting directly in front of me. And he turned around, and Jason looks at me, and he says, Sean's ruined the podcast. He's, yeah. he's ruined the podcast. We can no longer, who are we going to make fun of now? <laughs> yeah. who, who can we disrespect? Oh, get ready. I have, and, I have he a, said, I have he said, and he said, how is Sean, he goes and does this every night. And I said, yeah. not every night. <laughs> yeah, not every night. No. They couldn't make that deal. No, no but honestly, in all seriousness. Mondays and Tuesday, most people on Broadway, they take they have one night off. No, no, no I knew Sean was talented. I think we all know Sean is talented. But when you see him play this character that takes pure acting skill, and then he plays the piano, I knew he was classically trained, but then to see him play seven minutes of Rhapsody in Blue, yeah. unaccompanied, on a big ass Steinway in the middle of a Broadway stage yep. and bring the entire audience to their feet with with wet faces from uh, uh, the crescendo of this play with him playing this piano really does play it. I mean, it's just, and this character they played, I, I mean, Sean, I'm really, really, really knocked out. Truly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That's Absolutely. Nice. The most magical night I've ever had in the theater. And I know what a weird sentence that is, but, but, it, but it's, it's very sweet. Well, you've guys. had a few magical nights behind some theaters, but let's. Behind the theaters. Yeah, I'm talking sure. about sitting in the chairs. But in the theater. <laughs> and, and we, we, uh, that's the theater. That's the theater that's right off Van Nuys. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's a different story. We'll save that for a different podcast. <laughs> Um, but Sean, yeah, truly, right. and 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 Jason, you were, you and I were not alone in that. Everybody in that theater felt it. It was palpable. It was incredible. We uh, all of our friends who were there, all of whom are actors, uh, and and who and everybody who were going like this character that he created, an unbelievable. And what about the star wattage that Sean can cram into? Not just our well, dumbasses. That yeah. the Steven Spielberg is sitting there, and yeah. he's a part investor in the play. He yeah. believes in it so much, and boy, was he feeling smart at the end That's of it. That's really sweet. He, it was unbelievable, and and, uh, and and our buddy Frank Marshall was there. He was just beside himself, What also one of the producers of the play, and then just saying, I mean, I mean, everybody. It was it was unbelievable, uh, Sean. It, we, we, 
it was incredible. Marty Short, this is my favorite. So I see so Marty and Andrea Martin were sitting in front of you, Jay. And, and uh, so we go to the after party and we're walking over to the table where, up where we're all sitting. And I go by Marty. And Marty's at the bar. And there are probably 40 be- people between him and, and me. And he looks and he catches my eye. And across everybody, he shouts, why don't you have talent like that? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, another another great line though that Will Will came up to me at the party afterwards, and the first thing Will Arnett says to me, he goes, "Hey, I had to get up during the piano part. How did it go?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my and god! The and then and then you wake up to a nomination from the Outer Critics Circle. I know, I mean, yeah, this yeah, just, you guys it, are just so nice. I really appreciate it. Sean, we love I, you. We love you. I love it, you it brought, too, guys. It, we were it meant, now, now. Let me just say something. It meant the world that you guys. It meant the world that you guys took the time and effort to oh. come out to see me and support me. I love you guys. You're my brothers. We always talk about it. But I just, you just made my, my night. I'm going to so see it, it again. Nothing. I, would have, I would have done it every night of the week if we had Thanks. to. That's all the time we have, I think. Okay. Yeah. Guys, oh, sure. Well, Thanks, listener. We have guess. Safe. I can't <laughs> wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to take that <laughs> buy back. Okay. I can't uh, wait. To, th- this is so exciting. This is so exciting. Okay. I'm going to nerd out, guys. Okay. Uh, so William Shatner? Oh, it's Chewbacca. It's Chewbacca. <laughs> well, close. It's got, it's got close. Chewbacca. Um, our guest today, I'm so glad we got him here. I wasn't sure he'd be available because, as they say, he's hot, hot, hot right now in the Hollywood. That's triple hot. He really is all anyone talks about right now. At age 11, he was a Texas State swimming champion before throwing in the towel. Don't worry, he still had a Speedo on. And heading to the Golden State and then pursuing an acting career. He's become quite the staple in American culture in the last few years, being in the forefront of some major movie and television franchises. The internet refers to him as the ultimate daddy. But probably most importantly, he did a reading with me of Goodnight Oscar only a few years ago. Oh my God, Please welcome my Pedro pal, Pedro, Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. No you, way. No way. Woo. Pedro. Hello. Good Pedro morning. Pascal. Oh, this is a good How guy. Exciting. I, Here we go. You can just pull over, turn your car off, and uh, yeah. <laughs> enjoy this. No, no, keep uh, it on. Chari- so it keeps going through the speakers. Pedro Pascal. Oh, my gosh. No, no. Pedro. Pedro. on this guy. No, nope, can't do it. <laughs> Putting the curtain back on. No, he can't do it. Oh, he had to bail. Oh, no, where did he, he go? He to, no, he had to bail. He had Just to bail. kidding. He's getting a call. Where, where are, are you, Pedro, in? right now? Um, where am I? I'm in yeah. Los Angeles. Oh, you are? Okay, good. City of Angels. Um, City and of in Angels. your house, you, it looks like an empty interrogation room. It's like an. In- I'm in an empty interrogation room okay. in Los Angeles. <laughs> Dude, what? But can I move wow. the camera around to even make Uh-oh. it look make even sure scarier than it? There really is absolutely see. no oh. care. Wow, you're really in an empty room. I've been... Abducted? Huh. No, <laughs> but they let you do a but podcast. They're fans, but they're but they're fans of your podcast. Oh, wow, that's good. <laughs> now let me say something. It's true. I'm into daddies. You've seen Scotty, but I'm not hitting in you. I'm just celebrating how cool it is that the internet has collectively referred to you as our daddy, and that you embrace it. I've seen you in interviews and stuff. Like you kind of like that. It's kind of cool. And look, you got the scruff going on. You wear the glasses. I just want people to like me. Well, <laughs> still, just keep talking. Uh, this I mean, is this, yeah, you know the ki- yeah. this is what the kids call you. You've got what the kids call Riz. Do we know <laughs> what Riz is? No. Yeah. No. What's Riz? Charisma. Okay. Oh. Charisma. Oh. Charisma. My kids would say they call it W Riz. You got that W Riz. Wild charisma. And they get real embarrassed. I want to talk about Craig Mazin when we get to we'll it. Get to Craig We're not talking the, about Craig Mazin. The amazing Mazin. I want to continue oh, yeah, talking about good night. Oscar, we have oh, to just buddy. a little bit. You have to invite me. No, we have buddy, to because you got the go opening was good lord recently. It was yeah, yeah. and this is a this and the the production is directed by Lisa Peterson, right? Correct. That's correct. In- incredibly so well directed. I did a staged reading for Lisa Peterson twenty three years ago wow. at the Taper. That's where I met her. Oh, um, wow. It was part of the. I, I can't remember what the label of the uh, theater festival festival new works sort of uh, season that it was, and I um, nothing. I just I we're old. That's yeah. my point. <laughs> That's Let's move on. Lisa's amazing. Lisa's did you like? Incredible. Did you like her then? I loved her. It was amazing. Yeah. I was desperate to get, you know, a job in 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 professional theater no matter where i was whether it was los angeles or new york did that one end up going to stage it did not if it did it did not go with me <laughs> did you so so you pedro did you you're you're from texas <laughs> which i did not know yeah. you started did you start were you doing theater in texas uh no before you, no 
So I was so I was born in Chile. Yeah, in Santiago, yeah. Chile. Yeah. And I have let's, to say let's this. Let's not brag about the research, Sean. No, no, but I want to say this to you. In la escuela secundu, secundaria en la clase de español me llamaba Santiago porque otro chico eligió Juan. Pero qué bien, Sean. Estoy okay. Santiago, perdona. Do you know how to speak mm. Spanish, Sean? Qué orgullo. <laughs> my, I said in Spanish class in high school, my name was Santiago because it's some other kid picked Juan, which is Sean. Will, this is a great opportunity for you to yeah, do uh, your uh, launch uh, your the Spanish character you're working on. Well, I, I would like to, but uh, my character is uh, from Bolivia, sadly, so he's not. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's that's close really... by. He's very close by, but uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Pero, that's, that's, pero, that's better than that's better than the arbitrary Latino accents I have uh, <laughs> Pedro, <laughs> shared with the world. I, by the way, Pedro, I want to. I, I, I do want to. Sean, you. you can, Jason, you can go, but I do want. Now that we're in South America, and we're talking about this, Pedro. I am. I got to know you, uh, not personally, but like a, a lot of people from watching Narcos. I thought you were so mm -hmm. fucking great in Narcos. I yeah. loved. I loved Narcos, and you were so great in it and it was like i'm sure it was one of those things you've been working for years and then everybody's like hey look at look at this guy and you're like hey man i've been around for a long time yeah. right was that kind of yeah. how that happened and filled with talent for years it was narcos was a really lucky job and i think it, it came on the coattails of of the big fight of oberon martell in the mountain and game of thrones and and the people yeah. over at so netflix good. realizing that i wasn't living past that episode and right. then um <laughs> Uh, uh, spoiler alert! Uh, spoiler alert! Sorry, everybody. <laughs> yeah, from ten years ago. Um, you see, I'm not a Game of Thrones fan, so I didn't. I, I I've never watched. It's not it. that you're not a fan; you just haven't seen it. It was a splashy guest role of the season, okay, sort of okay. at the height of the game's popularity. So good. Uh, the so game. Good. The games. Good. good God! It's uh, early for me. We're not, not only we're we not going to cut that, we're going to double that one. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that was really the first thing that. Uh, that was the first time I experienced sort of a larger exposure in, in relation to work in a big way. Yeah. And, um, and that I would And you say, met David Benioff and your life's never yeah, been the same. You know, exactly. I mean, we're, we're it, all it, been touched it, by him. We, we it him. completely started there for me mm -hmm. um, as far as uh, consistent work. And, um, and so because of Game of Thrones, I got Narcos. And then the, it's, it was amazing. We shot the entire thing in Colombia. Yeah. It was six to seven months wow. a season. Yeah. And they would have one, it was sort of like, um, it was so location-based, yeah. you know, uh, mm -hmm. which is part of the reason I think the show worked as well as it did because the physical landscape of the show was kind of its secret weapon in that where we were shooting was kind of the main character of the show more than these larger-than-life real dangerous human beings and dangerous circumstances. What was that like working in Colombia? You know, I'm a soft yeah. guy. And, and, and all I'm thinking said. about is humidity and I'm, yeah. and I'm smelling a little bit of mildew on the wardrobe. Um, <laughs> it, it, were, were we in the jungle and was it tough to get dry? It, we were, sometimes we were in the jungle. The base of production was in Bogota and Bogota is 9,000 feet. Right. Yeah. And so I'm thinking the crispy snacks at Crafty did, were chewy, right? And so it was tough to get a good crunch out of the chips. You could never. No, know. no, it was dry. It was, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't humid up in Bogota. Bogota is like um, mm. four seasons in a day, and humidity isn't part of it. It's kind of it gets dry, sunny, rainy, okay, windy, cold. It's generally it's like Jason's personality, like yeah. kind of from Monday to yeah. Friday. It's kind of cold, but manic. Uh, but manic, but but some sometimes beautiful. Yeah, hostile, but and gorgeous. the cocaine is always just around the corner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Careful, <laughs> Jay. I mean, and Jay, what was and Jay really? What he wants to know is nice hotel and how close is the private airport? You know what yeah. I mean? And, and if he's got that down, then he's happy. I think it's only prop planes going in and out of those high. You guys would locations. love Columbia, and really? not for the reasons you think. It really? is. Oh, oh yeah. it's the best. It's the best. It's the best I would love place. To go. I would love to I go. like the yellow soccer uniforms. It's all I'm For into. the books. You would like the beaches and the mountains and the people. I think it's fascinating. I want these guys to hear this because when I was reading about you, about, about your parents, or the, the political asylum that they had to seek when you were a kid and the, the going around the Denmark and then like... By, by the way, before you get into this, I'm going to ask these guys, Pedro, you know this, but we're going to expose these guys. Do you guys know who the dictator oh was in Chile who was, you know, ostensibly just a puppet of the uh, American without looking it up? Paul Dunger. No. no. Darnesner. 
Pinochet. Anyway, keep going. That's Sorry. what I said. Go ahead, Sean. <laughs> I'm just exposing them, Pedro. No, I mean, if he you said enough you... vowels and consonants that you can kind of manipulate in the edit that he said Pinochet. How do you get it all in your head, Will? <laughs> Will? But yes? It, how do you get it all in your head? How's he so smart, Sean? Because I don't think about anything else because my brain, <laughs> no, I, 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 know. I have very little, pr I have no street smarts. Pinochet. So your parents fled, so you guys fled as. Because they uh, were in opposition to Pinochet. Yes. Is that true? Yes. No, it's a lie. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> No, but you know, sometimes they build. You, sometimes stuff on your Wikipedia gets kind of blown out of proportion. What 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 was the deal there? Um, then I want to know how much you paid for your name because it's the best name in Hollywood. Well, he's going to get to that because his last Sorry. name was different. Right, he had to change it. Here we yes, go. I was born. I was born Jose Pedro Balmaceda Pascal, and um, and uh, and and my parents they were just very young when they had. Uh, my sister and myself, my sister's two and a half years older than me. And um, there was a cousin of my mother's that was very, very involved in the opposition movement against the military regime. Um, its proximity to our family, I wouldn't say that my parents were revolutionaries by any stretch of the imagination, but they were Not very actual young. dissidents or anything, yeah. No, they were young, liberal college students and, um, and, and, ties from my mom's side um to uh close ties to the opposition movement just mm. in terms of family it was a first cousin of my mother's and my dad was doing his residency at the university hospital uh at la catolica it's called and so there was a there was a gunfight that my parents were not involved in mm -hmm. but somebody was wounded and they brought him to my parents house um so that my father could help tend the wound, hide them for a while. Um, the person that brought them to our house, and, you know, I was four months old at the time, mm -hmm. um, uh, he was taken into custody and tortured and gave names, and then they came looking for my parents. Wow. No way. And so then my parents had to go into hiding for about six months, um, as it's been told to me, and they, you know, like some sort of political thriller um, from the early 80s, they, they found a way uh, to, they saw that um, these, there was a change of guard at the Venezuelan embassy where um, one guy got off the bus, the same bus that the other guy would get on to, to switch places. Mm -hmm. And so there was this window where they could, Get in there. You know, climb over the wall, like no physically, way. physically wow. climb over the wall and then land wow. on, um, on the other side of the, the wall and, 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 and demand, uh, asylum. And it, and it worked. Wow. One time, Jason, you told, Jason told yeah, you, we you were, when you were a kid one time, yeah. you went to the guard yeah. and you didn't have the right pass at, at Warner's, Warner's and you had to go to the gate four and say <laughs> gate closed. one. Is that true? Yeah. And I thought about and going over the wall, but I was wearing super You had to park in the main pants. lot and you yes. had to end up walking over yeah. to the stage instead of going through gate one. I heard about I this. I jumped Jason, on the back of a golf cart. This is cart. how Jason got his first job at yeah. Warner Brothers. It's not dissimilar in the <laughs> guard no. and then the pass was didn't match then up. Then I yeah. dropped my headshot. I had to double back for my headshot and then a golf cart ran over it. Pedro, you know, I remember one of the reasons I know some of this stuff. When I was in 1981, and these guys know I, I'm good on dates. Uh, the movie Miss, Missing came out with Sissy Spacek, Jack Lemmon, and, and John yeah, Che was in it as well. He's the guy who goes missing. And my mom took it to me to see it in the theater. Your I was mom. probably too young, my mom. And, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. But I was probably too young. But, but she took me anyway, and it had such an impact on me to see how other people were living, and, and really in a real way, like a real... So it's always... I've always, I haven't paid attention necessarily, but but I always knew that that was the reality in that part of the world, especially at that time. And it yeah. occurs to me as you're telling this, and you're so good at telling this story, and you're such a, uh, yeah, you do have that riz, you're very charismatic. Mm. Has it ever occurred to you, uh, have you ever thought about sort of writing a story based on that or doing, no? No. Can, can we write it and would you do it? Um <laughs> It's really fascinating. <laughs> I mean, it, it is fascinating, deals. man. It's it's a, what an unbelievable story. It's totally unbelievable. I saw Missing myself when I was a kid. It, it is it had such an imprint in my you know brain when I saw it. 
because of how closely I could relate it to my yeah. parents' experience in this. Oliver Stone direct that? No, it was Costa Gravas. Ah. And, um, and, and, you know, my mom was like little and beautiful, like Sissy Spacek, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, I, I remember, I, I think about this now in my middle age that how strange it is to get information in that way through cinema and mm -hmm. relate it to an ex a kind of immediate experience of my parents that they aren't sharing with me. Not that, not that it was, not that it was this big secret or anything like that, but they just, um, we just didn't talk about it. Really? Have mm -hmm. you been back there since? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been back my whole life. They ended up on a list of pardoned exiles when I was eight years old. Oh, great. And so at that point, my older sister and I, we had already gotten sent back on our own, you know, the late 70s, early 80s, four-year-olds traveling by themselves, you know, in yeah. the custody of like a stewardess. Um, I did that. <laughs> and, uh, but when I was eight, it was like a huge family reunion because there were very large families on both sides that were left behind. And, um, and ever since then, we'd go back uh, um, my whole life. My younger siblings who were born in uh, the States were actually raised in Chile. So the strange circumstance of having been born there, never living there, going there my whole life, it never being home, but it being home and, and it's just, in this ever present um, do you have a place there now that you go back and, like a, i don't have a, i don't have a place there but both yeah. my siblings and my father do yeah wow um but a couple other movies you mentioned that were kind of a big like shifting gears here peggy sue got married in raising arizona you said were like oh, yeah. huge and then also your your mom wouldn't let you see a certain movie i think my dad my mom dad. didn't care my mom didn't give a shit my dad was really against me seeing the breakfast club well really yeah I could t he took me to go see First Blood, The Big <laughs> Chill, sure. um, you know, uh, anything that he was interested in seeing, frankly. Uh, it didn't matter if it was rated R or not. And um, Sean's in the Breakfast Club yeah. <laughs> and the Lunch Club and the Snack Club and the Dinner Club and the Lane. We're back. All the sequels. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I wasn't, allowed to, I wasn't allowed to see The Breakfast Club. Cause, wow. Um, cause it Just was about, because it was... What? Send a bad message. It was like, it? It, yeah, it was like kids complaining about their parents. Yeah. It's like, you're not watching that. That's hysterical. <laughs> I, want, I have a thousand questions if you would like to hear one. Okay. Yes. Uh, by the way, I guarantee you, you don't have a fucking <laughs> thousand. Please. Okay. Try one, I do. <sighs> so you, when you went to, so you <laughs> came to uh, 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 California, your parent, your dad moved you or your mom and dad both? Came? We all came to Orange County in uh 86 87 and then you went to and then things happened you went to new york university nyu i went to yeah and then at 18 i went to new york yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and you were terrible at waiting tables i was i really was i was a bad waiter and yeah. and <laughs> what restaurant do you remember, do you remember I, there's so many are you guys oh this is the 90s i started so i lived in new york in the 90s. i worked at um where's the first place i started it sort of as coffee barista person in places that definitely don't exist anymore and then i got a job at flamingo east do you yeah. remember uh, flamingo uh, east on yes. on second avenue yeah uh there was a place on seventh and second called virage i got a job at time cafe uh, no way got fired from time cafe. fez bar Yes. Um, <laughs> all uh, of these sound like dancing clubs. And then I moved up to Flamingo East had a had a party. They had different they had a upstairs space and they would throw parties up there. And every once in a while I got to bartend that. And then I um, remember Fred Fred Armisen had his birthday once at Flamingo East, like really? twenty upstairs years ago. This, upstairs, yeah. Yeah. And then and it was almost had like a living room. Like there was like a little back room and stuff. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. It was this beautiful space. And um, they fired me. Uh, what did you do that was so bad in each of these spots? Yeah, because you, it's. I read that you got fired over ten times from d different places. In some instances, well, one I wasn't very good. Yeah. And but um, what, what about your work was not good? Uh, I didn't have the talent to. The talent. I don't know. Be yeah. You know, it does. I think it really does take 
talent to yeah. know how to deal with every any kind of customer more so than the customers is to deal with management to be honest mm-hmm. with you yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. to kind of service the system of which you are a part of in terms of that environment and i wasn't smart enough to kind of you know keep myself safe and perceived as a reliable um, I was it's like I was always on time and stuff like that, but they didn't like me enough to keep me if I needed to cover my shift again because I was going to go to uh, Buffalo and shoot a Xerox industrial commercial yeah. and get stuck there, you know, because the this acting... This all sounds like somebody who's got had like a major drug problem just covering, you know what I mean? <laughs> just going like, they didn't have the... Put up and then he tried to my, tell us he was going to do a Xerox spot. My inconsistency <laughs> with the showing up of the thing. In the, <laughs> by the way, All right, pay, so pay you were bad at waiting tables. No, I was really innocent. I really was. I was just stupid, you know? No, you weren't yeah. stupid. I don't believe that no, for a second. Was. But, you know, Pedro, you know that Jason's never, because he grew up in showbiz, this is a true story, he's never had one of those kinds of jobs. And I think that you kind of wish I've you always wanted to. had. Yeah. I've it's actually always fantasized about waiting tables and bartending, truly. And I always offer you, every time I have a catering gig over here at the house, when I'm yeah. having people over, I would say, Jason, come on over. Yeah. You know, we'll be And then there. I end up doing it. You know what's yes. scary is that Jason would have, would, would have been great. He would have been great. I, I, yeah. I, do, I do like the idea of each table is like a separate stage, and you're trying to figure out what that audience needs from you so that you get the best possible tip yeah some that's right. some tables want to be left alone other tables want a little bit more uh here's here's show. what would have tripped here's what would have tripped you out and that your managers wouldn't have liked it because you would have always demanded a heart out and yeah, yeah. and so yeah. you you would have been like i'm, I'm gone before dessert my one joke i was used to do as a waiter i'd come by with the food and i'd put it down and the customer would say oh that looks wonderful and i'd point to my shirt and i'd go thanks i just got it <laughs> and that's a tip. That's a that's an extra five percent. This stupid twenty four years old killed every time. So listen, so Pedro, so Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is the thing that Jason was referring to, which I didn't know. You were credited as Pedro Balmaceda. Si. And what? Why Pascal? Oh, literally, it is not your name. I, I, uh, I was just no. It is. It's at the deal. It, no, no, no. But it. I mean, yes. Go ahead, sir. South Americans, we've got a lot of names. Like yeah. Jose Pedro, I never went by. My dad is Jose Pedro, and I'm Jose Pedro, and he's, but he 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 grew up as Pepe, and I grew up as Pedro, because it's Pedro is not a middle name, so Jose Pedro is like a first name, right? right. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I just grew up as Pedro, and then um, and so, Balmaceda Pascal is what is on your passport, your birth certificate, uh-huh. Pascal being the maiden name. So Balmaceda is my last name. It's my father's name. Uh-huh. And uh, and Beautiful. I went by, so I went by Pedro Balmaceda. And uh, there was a very, very meaningful reason to change it to Pascal. And there was also a very practical reason. And right. they really um, meet in the same level of importance because uh, one, Balmaceda was impossible for people to pronounce and it just mm-hmm. wasn't helping me in terms of auditions and casting and um pascal uh is very easy to read and say out loud and um it always felt like a part of my identity and so when my mother passed away uh 23 years ago mm-hmm. um i made a, a gra- you know a, a gradual transition uh to pascal I will and say, I will say, it is nice, and I will say, Pedro Pascal is a is a star name. It's, yeah. That's so funny because I resisted it for such a long time. It's it was something name. that I wanted, that I was talked, that I wanted to do, uh, you know, b- before my mother died. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hilarious. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but I always thought it was kind of silly because of the P and the P, and no. it sounded like maybe I was trying to create. And I, I don't know what I thought was silly about it. I should have, I should have gotten to it much sooner than I did, actually. Yeah. Uh, um, now, can I ask you? Can I fan out and dork out about Mandalorian for just a, just a little bit? Go for while it. These guys here we go. hang here tight. We fucking go. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. So, <laughs> so first of all, I want to know. I've seen every episode. 
It's, I love it. Me and Scotty, my husband. The Scotty. laser that you had in your belt. There's been a lot of discussion <laughs> um, that the safety wasn't turned off and that it came from Blog Blort. Is that true? <laughs> was it originally from Blog Blort? I want Scotty to do a cross in the Fucking background like, in a full Mandalorian accent. Ask him if it was from Blog Blort because I read on Ron Reddit. Um, Scotty, do you have any uh, questions about Mandalorian? Truly asking. I truly kind of hope Scotty, you have Scotty, Scotty. I have so many. So the in. Mandalorian. So listen, um, when you have the the mask on, can you? I want to know. Can you see? Is it really you? Do you do voiceover after? What's the? What's it like wearing the suit? Do the jets really work? Like what's? Ha- mm. Like tell me oh, all yeah, about it. Oh yeah, it's all it. real. Yeah, and they're in space too. Yeah. Stupid ass. <laughs> I'm a um, huge fan. We're in space. Uh, <laughs> we've always been in space. You sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, it's really the only way it's similar to Narcos in that regard where it's location based. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, there isn't really any other way to achieve it other than traveling to galaxies far, far away sure. um, from our long past. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, baby Yoda <gasps> yeah, is baby real. Yoda. I keep yeah. on having this. <laughs> Like almost sort of this electric shock that goes through my system if I say that. I don't know why. It, it's totally fine. But Grogu, the child. Grogu, right. You're supposed um, to say Grogu, not Baby Is Yoda. real. Um, but it's really you under the helmet. So uh, I can't see very well. On, I can't see very well in the helmet. There was a very extended experimental phase where I was in the suit for so much of it. And... Um, yeah. establishing what could be established in terms of a physical language, really drawing so much from uh, guys that were better at it than I was. And um, But how do you do Do they mic you in the in the helmet or do you do voice? There's a mic pack in the... There's a mic pack You're on... You're in showbiz, right, Sean? ...on your person. <laughs> but there's also... It's a good question, Sean. There's a, there's, a, there, there's a mic pack in the helmet and it's, it's, it's really kind of up against the... Harder okay. surfaces of your skull. Do they do they come mic you in your trailer, or do you just go over to the trolley? <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? And is By there the way, a snack just, hole, or do you have to take the whole helmet off? By right, the way, Sean? Sean? Sean, is it true? You you told me once that just talking the Mandalorian every time you watch it makes you grow goo. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> was I was grow. working on one of those. You grow you grow. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It, I grow a lot of goo when I watch the show. Yeah, for oh. sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so interesting. I, I just, I'm fascinated by the show. I love it. It's the hard show. to see. It's, 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 uh, it's, um, you, you kind of, there, there are so many will, ways that you sort of need to do a head tilt for the camera that makes it so that you can't even really look into the eyes of the human or puppet that you're acting uh-huh. with. And, 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 in uh, in some instances, you feel really, um, really cool and it mm-hmm. takes care of most of, the work and and i have a lot of fun in post because john favreau gives me a lot of opportunity to kind of edit with him and go over things that they got maybe on the day and it's really really surgical technical work that i've never yeah it's like exactly you don't have a lot of sync issues right not a lot of lip flap matches Correct. Yeah, because right. you can just do it. Now, you know what I'm thinking about in that helmet is uh, is just it's odor, you know. Yeah, um, like yeah, your own breath. breath. <laughs> Multiple episodes and stuff. So do you have like a lavender wipe that you can go in there? Who else before kind of, you? Yeah. <laughs> you, you odor, give, of course. Yeah. Do you put a flower in there or <laughs> what happens? I, 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 I was very aware of like my... It, it, not only that, but sort of the dark plastic of the tea, you know, because you're like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's almost like what your breath smells like, yep. s- like cakes on, t- like sure. stays there. Yeah, that's what. And you're not saying. handing that helmet off to second team for lighting, are you? You don't want <laughs> you don't want them in there <laughs> or sound. To, to they got their it. own, right? <laughs> different different helmet, different flower. <laughs> You know, you'd be surprised. <laughs> it's so real, Pedro. It's so real. This is giving Jesus. That would keep him up at night if the yeah. company's standing was wearing What do you it. mean we don't have a second team helmet like that? That should have just come from the shop. Pedro, what you need to know is what would happen is the whole thing with the helmet, if Jason was doing that, he would, it would go to Bloom, his assistant, and then Amanda, his wife, she'd be deep in on the cleaning of the helmet. Jason, there's no way that Jason can have this helmet going to somebody else. He would hand the problem up to eventually. Right. His wife and Zach and Aline and everybody. There'd be emails, <laughs> guys. We uh, we gotta get Jason's helmet situation sorted out before he shows up on set. Meanwhile, Pedro's a normal, nice guy. He shows up. He's like, I'll just 
just roll with it, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, you no, complain. I, yeah. I had three callbacks for Mandalorian, and I think that, that was the issue. I think ultimately <laughs> Fabro is just, this guy's a problem. You couldn't, you couldn't come to an agreement on that. No. That's understandable. Sedaris Cider- is, is on that show, right? Amy Sedaris. No, yeah. oh, yes, she is. Yeah, she's the great. That was that was a, you know there was an instant with Amy Sedaris specifically, and 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 that was where um, she made me laugh so hard oh. that I spat into the helmet. 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 <laughs> and um and 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 that was a moment where I came into a, a clear understanding of the close proximity that I had to my own. To the things that are in my mouth, your own flesh. my saliva, and yeah. it's you know, or, or like lunch or breakfast. She's or something. The, best. She's the best. I love her. Yeah. But um, listen, I want to talk about your new movie too. It's 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 uh, what's it called? Strange way of life. Is that what it is? Strange way of life. Strange yeah. way of life. Extraña forma de vida. And it's a thirty-minute film. That's it. It's just one film. It's a thirty-minute short, written and directed by uh, Pedro Almodovar, uh, wow. starring Ethan Hawke. And it's it's gay cowboys who travel across the desert to find each other twenty five years apart. Um, former lovers, um, yeah. and one travels across the desert to see him again, and um, and it is shot in the same places that Sergio Leone was shooting his spaghetti westerns in that southern region of Spain. Oh wow, that's cool! Wow. On the same sets. That's cool. Way. And. Uh, Saint Laurent does the costumes. Wow. And uh, it's me and Ethan. And I'd never worked with Ethan before. Um, I actually listened to him on your podcast. Wasn't he great? He's awesome, isn't yeah, he? He's so great. cool. I love him. It was so great to g- get to hear you guys get to know him. Yeah. Because yeah. I spent the summer with him. And, you know, I saw movies that he was in, I, starting with like The Explorers. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Dead Poet Society and Reality Bites. And then he published a book. And then he was on Broadway. And then he was off Broadway. And then he yeah. directed off Broadway. And then career. he was like working with friends. And, yeah. and yeah. then we were doing, you know, this thing with Pedro Almodovar, whose movies I saw growing up. It was kind of a family favorite. And it just meant a lot in all earnestness. It was this moment of sort of being listened to and taken seriously by these two influences was a very surreal experience for me because they he was my scene partner and this was our director and Mm -hmm. they wanted to be collaborative and they wanted to um i don't know all get on the same page at the same level Mm -hmm. and i felt so influenced by both of them in my upbringing that yeah. you know as, as corny as it may sound i'm like these guys care what i think yeah and that was but, but uh, you know what but you know why pedro you know why and i mean this too you earned that seat there because yeah. you're really good at what you do yeah and it's i hope simple. you see what we all see which is yeah. a guy, an incredible talent incredible artist and you deserve to be there and that's why that's why you were there in that scene with those guys Thanks, yeah well. where, where do we that. get to see where 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 do they, where's it going to come out it's going to premiere at can oh gross he did a previous short Jesus, with, um, that was such a nice story and then you fucking ruined it with your can <laughs> bullshit <laughs> <laughs> i've never been did you get to keep any of the are you going to go um i'm i'm going to i'm going to try to go i want to go um really badly he did a previous short with tilda swinton so this is the second of what ah, could be oh, cool. three installments of these 30 minute um english language gotcha. forays because that's everything cool. he's ever done before is um in his native hey, language pedro i'm uh, no i'll move I'm, I'm tech avail just fyi i'm, I'm just putting it out there to the universe did you get to keep any of the saint laurent cowboy stuff i bet it's no. some pretty cool stuff no then they don't give me nothing I asked for the green jacket. If you want to look up the trailer right now, you see me in this kind of like bright green Jimmy Stewart, yeah, you know, denim cowboy. They said, no, they want to hold on to it for possible reshoots. Jacket. Um, <laughs> no, they just they just gave me a flat no. 
Huh. Jason wants to know, did it, how, mm. was it moldy? Was the jacket moldy? Did he smell anything? <laughs> <laughs> did it breathe right out there? Because I imagine it was pretty hot. And now, it, and it, it, didn't wick. Yeah. it didn't have a wicking quality. And the, and the last thing I want you to do, Paige, if, only if you want to, on SNL, you were so fucking funny on a Saturday Night Live. Can you just do a little bit of the voice? Which one? Can you just do a little bit? I don't bit? know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It's so stop, fucking... Stop asking me. I'm not comfortable with that. <laughs> it's really I've funny. Putting, I've been putting on an accent this whole time, and now I finally get to talk about myself. <laughs> <laughs> I could listen to that Anyways, for nine well hours. I'm talking to you guys. I like to talk to you guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Pedro, thank you for joining us, my friend. Pedro, you we love you very much. You're a talent and a friend. Honestly, you're such a fan, such a, such a huge fan, man. You're so good at what you yeah, do. Yeah, keep, keep going, doing my friend. I really love talking to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Pedro. We love have you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. I'm just going to take the headphones off because I have no idea yeah. what yeah, that's fine. Just take them off and walk Slam away. Slam the iPad. Yeah. All right. Bye, buddy. Bye, bye, bye. Man, he is great. Yeah, yeah. I'm such a massive fan of The Last of Us. Did you guys watch it? I haven't yet. Did you? Yeah. Well, did you ever play the game? Uh, I did not play the game. No. Yeah, it's it was it's um, so good. I, I saw I saw the prequel. Uh oh, here it comes. the first of us. Did you not see? <laughs> he was. That's so dumb. <laughs> of course, it's, it's dumb. What do you want from dad. me? This is a dad. This is a great clean dad joke. It's a clean joke. That works. Do you works need anymore. a headset to play that game? Is that one of those where you gotta? You can. Use Will's headset. Don't, what do you mean, yeah. Wills? Millions of people enjoy themselves. But wait, he's but such what a talent, that guy. But isn't it amazing that, like, he he started out so, like, he's been doing this forever. So when Game of Thrones hit, and when he was just, like, Wonder Woman, like, all these big things that he's done, he, the, it kind of came out of it, what seemingly always oh, the same story all the time, that it seemingly came out of nowhere. But he's been doing this forever. That, that's yeah. what I so, meant. And that that's, was my first, yeah. Yeah, so that's why he's, like, down to earth and normal because he's, like... You guys are making all the hype. I'm not making all the hype. I'm just working. You know what yeah. I mean? I saw, yes. him in one, I saw him in an interview one of the, where they had him strapped to a lie detector, and he's mm. just, like, so comfortable. Okay, an interview, I guess it was more like an interview. <laughs> anyway, whatever it was, he was at a police station, and he was strapped to a lie detector. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was doing and he was just like, I was, and I was marveling at how comfortable he is in his own skin and how relaxed yeah. and normal he is. And it, yeah. that's why I asked that question. It's like, you can tell he's the guy who's paid his dues and he's been doing it for a long time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. He, and he's not like, oh my God, this is yeah, all he's so the crazy. Greatest. Jason, you got to run. Where are you heading to? And are you gonna? Where are you going right now? I get you some charity thing. Are you saving some kids? Yeah, I got to go feed feed a bunch of folks. Um, are you gonna Are you gonna drive? Or are you gonna ride your? No, he's gonna drive and then he's gonna uh, probably the ship. Bicycle. Oh, he was bike. I was gonna say bike. Oh, bike. bike. Uh, I love you, Sean. Have a great show tonight, you star. All right, I love you too. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Michael Grant Terry, Rob Armjarv, and Bennett Barbaco. Smartless.